of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is the mediator of a new covenant, so that since he has died, those who are called may receive the eternal inheritance promised to them. The Lord be with you. Welcome to St. Michael and all Angels in Christchurch, New Zealand, for this service of spiritual communion. I hope that these words that we say together and the scripture that we hear will give us guidance and comfort in this time that we are in. In a moment of quiet, let us now bring before God the sins that we have committed by the things that we have done and the things that we ought to have done. Let us say the words that ask for God's forgiveness. Merciful God, we have sinned in what we have thought and said, in the wrong we have done, and in the good we have not done. We have sinned in ignorance, we have sinned in weakness, we have sinned through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry. We repent and turn to you. Forgive us for our Saviour Christ's sake and renew our lives to the glory of your name. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Through the cross of Christ, God have mercy on you, pardon you and set you free. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. God strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, come to us. Free us from the stain of our sins. Help us to remain faithful to a holy way of life and guide us to the inheritance you have promised. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Our first reading this afternoon comes from the book of Genesis. Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, Behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I, have, for I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come forth from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant, to be God to you and to your descendants after you. And I will give to you and to your descendants after you the land of your sojournings, or the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession. And I will be their God. And God said to Abraham, As for you, you shall keep my covenant, you and your descendants after you, throughout their generations. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm is, the Lord remembers his covenant forever. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works that he has done, his miracles and the judgments he uttered. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are all the truth. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. He is mindful of his covenant forever, of the word that he commanded for a thousand generations, the covenant which he made with Abraham, his sworn promise to Isaac. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If today you hear his voice, pardon not your hearts. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. 
praise and glory to God. Jesus said to the Jews, Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, they will never see death. The Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died, as did the prophets, and you say, If anyone keeps my word, they will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham who died? And the prophets died. Who do you claim to be? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say that he is, our, he is your God. But you have not known him. I know him. If I said I do not know him, I should be a liar like you. But I do know him, and I keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he was to see my day. He saw it and was glad. The Jews then said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and you have seen Abraham. Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. So they took up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ the Lord. Fantastic readings today. Seriously, seriously good stuff. The gospel of John never fails to deliver in its absolute brilliance. The Christ that we meet in the gospel of John is uh, something else. I think while we've got this story of uh, Abraham and Christ, you know, this thing before Abraham was, I am here. The reason the, the Jews want to stone him to death, because at this point he's essentially saying that he is God. I mean, this is a problem if you don't believe that Jesus is divine in any way. If you don't believe he's the son of God, and here he is saying, before Abraham was, I am, this is a problem. But the thing here that stood out for me today is Jesus' answer to their first go at him. If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifies me. This is for all of us. It's so easy for us to get stuck into it, uh, to get caught in our own thing about thinking the things that we say and the things that we do are important, particularly in ministry, I think. We can get caught into this. Ultimately, everything we do in ministry, everything we do as a follower of Christ is to glorify him. There's no, if I'm saying all of, all of these words, if I'm doing all of this and it's all for my benefit, what a waste of time. Seriously, this is for God so people can know what God is doing in the world and what God is doing in their lives. Those who would glorify themselves in the ministry always end up coming up a cropper. I've seen it so many times in my in my ministry, and I'm sure there'll be others who do the same. You could say that one of the great temptations with ministry or one of the great temptations when we believe that we are doing the work of God is that we are somehow more important than others, yet we, we are not. All we do is so others can know Christ. Christ who willingly went to the cross and died for all of us. Christ who willingly went to the cross and died for us and rose from the tomb so that, tomb so that we may share eternal life with him. That is the gospel. That is the message. That is why we do any of this. This is why this is being live streamed right now. It's not for me. It is so people can know the message of Christ. So every time you are seeing on your Facebook feeds, you must be seeing so much of this. Priests and ministers with talks of the day and prayers and all this kind of stuff. It is wonderful. But it is only wonderful if it is for the glory of God. It is only wonderful if it helps people to know what God is doing in their lives. If it is for their own self-glorification, it is worthless. This is particularly in our celebrity-obsessed uh, time. I think this is a very powerful message. It is good that all of us know that what God is doing in our lives, particularly at this time where we may feel so isolated. And for those of us who are ministering in this new environment, it's very important that we remind ourselves that what we are doing 
is for his glory, not our own. The Lord be with you. Oh, let us now pray for the world and for the church. Let us pray to God who alone makes us dwell in safety. For all who are affected by coronavirus, the illness or isolation or anxiety, that they may find relief and recovery. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are guiding our nation at this time, our Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern, those who are shaping national policies, that they may continue to make wise decisions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For doctors, nurses and medical researchers, that through their skill and insights, many will be restored to health. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the vulnerable and the fearful, those on our parish prayer list, for the gravely ill and the dying, that they may know your comfort and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died, those who are on our list of remembrance at this time, those we have loved, those who we've learned from, those who are now held within God's eternal and loving care. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, let life perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. We thank you, Father, for all your saints, those who have been the lights of Christ throughout all generations. Most especially our patron, Michael the Archangel, and of course the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom we greet as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith, we may by your grace receive. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. At Tifana, we are the body of Christ. By one spirit we were baptised into one body. Keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Amen. We are bound by the love of Christ. Indeed we are. Let us pray. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all of the benefits you have given us for all the pains and insults you have borne for us. Since we cannot now receive you sacramentally, we ask you to come spiritually into our hearts, O most merciful Redeemer, friend, brother, that we may know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. Well, as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God did not spare his own Son, 
but gave him up for us all. With Christ, he will surely give us all things. Let us pray. Lord of mercy, let the sacrament which renews us bring us to eternal life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining us here at St. Mark and the Angels in Christchurch, New Zealand for this spirit, uh, the service of spiritual communion. I hope that it has been of some benefit to you on your journey at this time, maybe in isolation or in the work that you are doing. May these words that we have said together, these prayers that we have prayed together, give you guidance and comfort for where we are right now. The Lord be with you. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of the Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go now to love and serve the Lord. Go in peace. Amen. We go in the name of Christ.